In this video, we will tell you about what is the diagnosis and treatment of Graves' disease. Before that, take a look what is the impact of pregnancy and Graves' disease. Slightly higher levels of thyroid hormones are usually not a cause for concern in pregnancy. However, it is important to bring down very high thyroid levels before becoming pregnant. Anyone who is pregnant and has Graves' disease should discuss which treatment options are safe with a doctor. Thyroid levels decrease with the help of anti-thyroid medications. Usually low levels of anti-thyroid medications are given in pregnancy and breastfeeding. Radioactive iodine therapy is contraindicated in pregnancy and breastfeeding. If the increased levels of thyroid hormones persist in pregnancy, it may cross the placenta and cause fetal or neonatal hyperthyroid. A pregnant woman who has been treated with surgery or radioactive iodine should inform her health care provider so her baby can be monitored for thyroid-related problems later in the pregnancy. Pregnant women may safely be treated with anti-thyroid medications. Health care providers can sometimes diagnose Graves' disease based only on a physical examination and a medical history. Blood tests and other diagnostic tests, such as the following, then confirm the diagnosis. The ultrasensitive thyroid stimulating hormone is usually the first test performed. This test detects even tiny amounts of thyroid stimulating hormone in the blood and is the most accurate measure of thyroid activity available. Another blood test used to diagnose Graves' disease measures T3 and T4 levels. In making a diagnosis, health care providers look for below normal levels of thyroid stimulating hormone, normal to elevated levels of T4, and elevated levels of T3 because the combination of low thyroid stimulating hormone and high T3 and T4 can occur with other thyroid problems, health care providers may order other tests to finalize the diagnosis. This test measures the amount of iodine the thyroid cocks from the bloodstream. High levels of iodine uptake can indicate Graves' disease. Health care providers may also recommend a thyroid stimulating immunoglobal test although this test usually is not necessary to diagnose Graves' disease. This test, also called Thyroid Stimulating Hormone Antibody Test, measures the level of thyroid stimulating immunoglobal in the blood. Most people with Graves' disease have this antibody, but people whose hyperthyroidism is caused by other conditions do not. This skin shows how and where iodine is distributed in the thyroid. With Graves' disease, the entire thyroid is involved, so the iodine shows up throughout the gland. Other causes of hyperthyroidism, such as nodules, small lumps in the gland, show a different pattern of iodine distribution. Treatment options for Graves' disease are antithyroid medications, radioactive iodine therapy, and surgery. Antithyroid medications work to reduce the amount of hormone that the thyroid makes. These drugs do not represent a cure, but they can have lasting effects. Thyroid levels may take many weeks or months to come down. However, the treatment may take 12 to 18 months or longer to work. As a result, a doctor may also recommend another approach such as radioiodine therapy or surgery. According to National Institute of Diabetes and Digestive and Kidney Diseases, Methimazole comes under brand name Northix. Tazolo is one of the most commonly used antithyroid medications. Propanolol is given in a dose of 20 to 40 three times a day in severe terichostochosis or thyroid crisis. The American Thyroid Association recommends beta blockers as an initial treatment for hyperthyroidism. These medications prevent thyroid hormone from carrying out its usual functions as it circulates in the bloodstream. Once thyroid levels are within a healthy range, people can stop taking beta blockers. This can be a quick and temporary way to relieve symptoms such as an increased heartbeat, nervousness, and trembling. 
it usually starts working within hours. Carbamazo, methimazole, and propylthraceps also considered to be a drug of choices for treatment of Graves' disease. Carbamazo and methimazole inhibits iodine or gaffinication by mimics the enzymes thyroid peroxidase, reducing the levels of T3 and T4 levels of thyroid gland, while propyl thyrosely inhibits the conversion of T4 to T3 and also inhibit thyroid stimulating immunoglobal levels. Therefore, decrease levels of thyroid stimulating hormone and Graves' disease. Initial doses of carbamazo and propyl thyrosly are 40 to 60 g per day and 300 to 450 g per day, respectively, for three to four times a day. Tail off dose after every four to eight weeks based on thyroid function test. Based on thyroid function test, the maintenance dose is 5 to 15 per day and 50 to 150 egg per day for carbamazo and propyl thyrosly respectively. Treat for about 18 to 24 months and monitor levels of thyroid function test and thyroid stimulating hormones for further treatment considerations. In the U.S., the most common treatment for Graves' disease is radiodony therapy. This involves taking radioactive iodine orally either in capsule or liquid form. It targets the thyroid gland and destroys the cells that produce thyroid hormone. Iodine-131 gradually destroys the cells that make up the thyroid gland but does not affect other body tissues. Many health care providers use a large enough dose of iodine-131 to shut down the thyroid completely. Radiodony therapy is not used in pregnant women or women who are breastfeeding. Radioactive iodine can be harmful to the fetus thyroid and can be passed from mother to child in breast milk. Surgery is the least used option for treating Graves' disease. Sometimes surgery may be used to treat pregnant women who cannot tolerate anti medications, people for whom other forms of treatment are not successful, people suspected of having thyroid cancer, though Graves' disease does not cause cancer. Before surgery, the health care provider may prescribe anti medications to temporarily bring a patient's thyroid hormone levels into the normal range. This presurgical treatment prevents a condition called thyroid storm a sudden severe worsening of symptoms that can occur when hyperthroider patients have general anesthesia. When surgery is used, many health care providers recommend the entire thyroid be removed to eliminate the chance that hyperthyroidism will return. If the entire thyroid is removed, lifelong thyroid hormone medication is necessary. The prathyroid glands can be damaged because they are located very close to the thyroid. These glands help control calcium and phosphorus levels in the body. Damage to the laryngeal nerve, also located close to the thyroid, can lead to voice changes or breathing problems. But when surgery is performed by an experienced surgeon, less than 1% of patients have permanent complications. Stay connected for more healthy updates. Do like and subscribe our YouTube channel.